Hello, in this video I'm going to solve the following problem for you. So let us read the problem together. By writing i sub n, which is defined to be this integral in this form that you see here, and integrating the last integral by parts using u equals to x substitution, obtain a reduction formula for i sub n. Use this formula to find i sub 3. That would be a good idea if you pause the video at this point and try to solve the problem yourself first. If you do your calculations correctly, these are the answers that you will get. The reduction formula that you are supposed to get reads in the following way. I n is equal to this expression plus this expression times I sub n minus 1. So this relation relates I sub n to I sub n minus 1. And then if you use this reduction formula, you will find this expression for I sub 3. Okay, now let us solve the problem. Here, I sub n is a sequence. Of course, n is a natural number. What does it do for us? You give a natural number to I sub n, and it gives you uh, integral back and if you calculate that integral it gives you a function it gives you a group of functions because we will have also a constant c constant of integration at the end so you can visualize i sub n as a uh, as a sequence of classes of functions okay for example if i write i sub 1 this means that i have to replace n with 1 then what i will get is this but this is a very famous integral, so the answer becomes 1 over a tangent inverse of x over a. And of course, if you want, plus a constant c at the end. So calculating i n when n is equal to 1 poses no problems. Okay, the problem becomes harder if I increase this power. Okay, so now let us say that n is a natural number. But let us consider that n is greater than or equal to 2, because I already solved the problem for i sub 1. <clears throat> then what can, I, what can I do? Of course, I am following exactly what is written in the text of the problem itself. So what I do, I would write i n as equal to. Here you have 1. So what I do, I will write it like this. I would write my integral here, and I put dx here. In the denominator, I have x squared plus a squared to the power of n. And in the numerator, instead of having 1, I write 1 in a little bit fancy way by writing x squared plus a squared minus x squared. And then what happens now? x squared and x squared are gone. Then I have a squared, but my goal is to have 1, so I have to divide by a squared to compensate for that change. So hopefully you agree with me. What I have written here is exactly my i n. Yes, x squared, x squared, and x squared are cancelled. A squared is cancelled with that one. I am left. I'm left with one in the numerator, which is exactly this one. But what is the benefit of that? I can write it as this. I can take this one and divide it here. So this means one of these will simplify. Uh, will be simplified with one of these factors. So 1 is left in the numerator, and then I multiply it by dx, it becomes dx, and then I have x squared plus a squared to the power of n minus 1. Okay? And then I will have this one divided by that one, so it becomes minus integral. Uh, I have 1 over a squared out, and then I will have x squared over x squared plus a squared to the power of n dx. So what I just did, I actually decomposed this one single integral to two integrals. One integral of the first part minus the integral of the second part. I did some simplification here, and I also took care of this constant. But if you compare this integral that is generated in that way with the original integral, you will see that this is exactly the same, except that n minus 1 is now instead of n. So this means that if I want to name it, a good name for this integral is i, but it is sub n minus 1. Okay? But the point is that I want to calculate this integral. 
So if you don't mind, let me call it J. Of course, J also depends on N, but we don't need that dependence, so let me just simply call it J. And now my goal is to follow what is given in the problem, the hint in the problem, to calculate J. So let me write J here. According to the problem, uh, instead of x squared, I write x times x over x squared plus a squared to the power of n. Then I have my dx. Uh, the problem is asking us to use integration by parts and taking x to be u. So the formula for integration by parts is integral of u dv equals to uv minus integral of v du. And the problem tells us to take this to be u. Of course, if I want to take this to be u, then I have to take this one to be dv. And then I will find v, and I find du, and I use this formula to calculate j. Okay, so u is x. This then, mean, uh, this then means that du is dx. And then dv is equal to x over x squared plus a squared to the nth power dx. And now if I want to find v, I have to uh, uh, take the integral of this function, x over x squared plus a squared to the power of n, then I have dx. Okay, how should I calculate this integral? Uh, I use method of substitution by introducing a new variable. So I introduce the new variable t to be x squared plus a squared. Then I differentiate both sides, so dt becomes 2x dx. But I want to have the combination of x dx. It motivates me to multiply everything by one half. So this becomes x dx. So now if I want to continue this, so this becomes equal to integral. Instead of x dx, I put 1 half dt, but 1 half is a constant. I pull it out, so in the numerator I have just dt, divided by x squared plus a squared to the nth, but x squared plus x a squared is just t, so it becomes t to the nth. And it is crucial to understand that at this uh, step, n is greater than 1, because it matters. If n is equal to 1, then this integral becomes a logarithmic function. If n is greater than 1, then it becomes a rational function. Okay? And then here, you know that n is greater than or equal to 2, so the logarithmic function is now... Um, uh, logarithmic function is not the answer, so how should I calculate this? Extremely simple, so this becomes 1 over 2 integral t to the power of minus n dt. And if I integrate this, it becomes 1 over 2, 2 to the t to the power of minus n plus 1, divided by minus n plus 1. So if you don't mind, let me simplify it a little bit. I factor a minus sign out here and put it there, so it becomes minus a half. And then I bring this t down. I have to multiply the, power, the exponent by a negative sign, so it becomes n minus 1. I also have n minus 1 here, and then I have 1 there. Oops, I don't need to have this here. Okay, so now I have to switch back to the original variable. So if I do that, finally the v that I am looking for becomes minus 1 over 2 times n minus 1. And then I have t to the power of n minus 1, but t is x squared plus a squared to the power of n minus 1. So let us keep it here. So that is my v. Now I use that formula of integration by parts. So I will be able to say that, okay, that j, which is the integral that I'm going to calculate, is equal to u times v. So u is x, v is this expression. So I have to multiply u by v. So this 1 turns into an x because u is x. So this becomes equal to minus... I put an x there, and then I have 2n minus 1, and then I have x squared plus a squared to the power of n minus 1. This is u times v. But then I will have the formula minus v du. 
du is simply dx, so I just need to put v there. v includes this constant factor 1 over 2n minus 1, and also an extra minus sign, which will turn this minus sign to a positive, so I would write it as plus 1 over 2n minus 1, so I pull that out, and then I am left with integral dx over x squared plus a squared to the power of n minus 1. Yes? So this is my <coughs> j. So let us double check that everything is working. Yes, so that is my j. But now something interesting happens here is that this is exactly again i sub n minus 1. <clears throat> okay, so what I do, this is my i n, which relates itself to i n minus 1 and j in that way, but j itself is somehow related to i n minus 1. So what I will do, I will write i n, which I'm looking for, and I will actually write 1 over a squared times i sub n minus 1, But minus 1 over a squared multiplied by this expression, which is j. So I have to multiply this here, which this becomes positive. Uh, so let me write it in two steps so that you can see that in front of you. Okay, so I will copy and paste this term. So let us just do it quickly. Yes, and then I have plus 1 over 2n minus 1 times i sub n minus 1 again. And finally, this is a very simple algebra now, so I would write i sub n is equal to, I have one factor of i n minus 1 here, so let me write it once more. I multiply this there, it becomes positive, x over 2a squared n minus 1, x squared plus a squared to the power of n minus 1. So I multiply this factor here, and then I will have a minus. I will also multiply this factor there. And then I have i sub n minus 1. But now you can immediately realize that between these two, I can factor 1 over a squared out. So finally, I will have i n equals to 1 over a squared. So I open a pair of brackets. I factored 1 over a squared from this term and the last term from the left. And I will factor i sub n minus 1 from this term and that term from the right. And what is left for me from here, 1 is left. From here, minus 1 over 2n minus 1 is left. And then I also have this term that I have to add at the end. So this becomes x over 2a squared n minus 1, x squared plus a squared to the power of n minus 1. And this, I can do some simplifications. For example, here, I can take the common denominator, which is 2n minus 1. So this will be multiplied here, and I open the pair of brackets, so it becomes 2n minus 2. There is a minus sign here, and 1 is left here. So that is just 2n minus 3 over 2n minus Okay, so if I want to write it, and if I want to write it exactly according to the answer given in the book, so what I will do, I would write i n equals to, I will write this term first, which is x over uh, 2a squared times n minus 1 times x squared plus a squared to the power of n minus 1. Yes? And then 1 over a squared multiplied by that multiplied by i sub n minus 1. So this becomes plus 2n minus 3 divided by 2a squared n minus 1 multiplied by i n sub minus 1. So that is the reduction formula that we are supposed to reach at. Okay, now I can use this to calculate i sub 3. What I need to do is first to replace n with 2, okay? So in order to calculate i sub 3, I need i sub 2. 
So anticipating that, I first calculate I sub 2 by replacing n with 2 everywhere. So if I do that, this becomes x, this is 1, so it becomes 2a squared. And when I put n equals to 2, this becomes 1, so this becomes x squared plus a squared. And then here, when I put n equals to 2, this becomes 4 minus 3, 1. And this becomes simply 2a squared. And then this becomes i sub 1. Okay, but what is i sub 1? This is a steel on the board. It is 1 over a tangent inverse of x over a. So I replace it here. This means that I can write x over 2a squared, x squared plus a squared, and then I have 1 over 2a squared multiplied by that. But of course, I will constant, I will add this constant at the very end. So it becomes plus 1 over 2a squared multiplied by that. It becomes 2a cubed tangent inverse of x over a. So this is i2. But now I need to calculate I3. So it means that I go back to my formula. I replace every appearance of n with 3. So then it becomes x, 3 minus 1, 2, times that is 4a squared. And then I have x squared plus a squared to the power of 3 minus 1, which is 2. And then plus, if I put a 3 here, 6 minus 3 is 3. And then it becomes 4a squared. Yes, I replaced n with 3. And then I will have i2. But this expression is my i2. So instead of i2, I write the whole expression here. So I just write it quickly here. And now because this is the final process, I would probably present my introduce my constancy here as well and then the only thing that we are supposed to do is to do a little bit of simplification or arrangement so here nothing I can do so I copy and paste that part but this one I multiply in so this becomes a 3x 4 times 2 is 8 a to squared a squared is a to the fourth and then I have x squared plus a squared. And then again, I multiply this here. So this becomes 3, 4 times 2, 8, a squared, a cubed, a to the fifth. And I have tangent inverse of x over a. And then I have my constant at the end. So this will be the result for i sub 3. Okay, so I hope that the video was useful for you. Until the next video, be safe and goodbye. Thank you.